Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how you can make an experimental short film. Experimental short films are a great way to explore your technical abilities, to try out new stories, and it's a great way to showcase your skills. So I made an experimental short film in the beginning of 2022 called Final Drift. And it's a story about this young boy who basically gets put on a death row and it's an allegorical depiction of the final day of a death row inmate. So for your experimental short film, you'll have to find a concept. And most experimental short films don't really have a linear like narrative story, but it has a very cool, like interesting idea. Originally, my film was gonna be about some homeless kid and Burger King and something like that. So after I got that random idea, I was like, all right, I'm gonna just go with it. And I went location scouting to pretty much every fast food restaurant in my town. And I drove around. I went to like, honestly, 20 different restaurants, got nose pretty much at every single one of them until I got to Dairy Queens. And the manager there was super cool when they said they were okay with us filming. We were like in shock. Cause I was like, wait, like, Dairy Queen just agreed, you know, like, cause most of them, like McDonald's and Burger King were like, just straight up no, right? So once they agreed, we got the location down. And also sometimes when you don't have your concept or don't have like an, an initial idea for your film, go on location scouting before you get your idea. It could be a great way to spark some creativity cause you're going out there seeing the world, right? So you can base your story on a location. And once we found this restaurant, I was still working on the script at the time. I wasn't sure what I was gonna film exactly. And I was rushing through the script. And the more I tried to write it, the more it didn't really make any sense with this homeless kid. And it wasn't really like an experimental short film. So then I got another idea, which was the one I told you earlier with the death row inmate idea. And we spent like the whole entire day location scouting for the restaurant. So we didn't wanna waste the location. And we tied this restaurant to our death row inmate idea. And it was like a depiction of the last meal, right? On the day of the shooting, this day I was like, okay, we're gonna film today. So in the morning I woke up, went to school, and basically first period I had band and during band we were watching a movie and I was low-key on notes trying to figure out the shot list during class. I had nothing planned. It was such a rush pre-production. You should never do this. Keep in mind, pre-production is so important. So make sure you spend a lot of time figuring out all the shots because that's what keeps the production very smooth and you know, risk-free. So basically, I was lucky rushing through this storyboard and the shot list. So I kind of plan it where in the mornings, it's a lot easier. And then in the afternoon, it's a lot more complex with more people and more stunts and like stuff like that. So the morning is very chill. It's just only recording me and the actor. I was just doing DP and sound at the same time. And it was pretty easy, honestly. We got to my friend's house. We started filming inside his sister's bedroom. After that, I was like, you know what? I kind of want to tie in some kind of like aspect of religion to this film because, you know, a lot of these death row inmates, they, you know, go through this thing where like the priest goes talk to them, I think. So then my friend, he goes to church, right? So I kind of like asked him, like my main actor, if we could film at his church maybe. And to my surprise, he was down and he got the pastor at his church was also super cool with it. And she let us in. We had this ginormous hall to ourselves, which is the coolest thing ever. And we had the lighting technician like just do a cool like spotlight on them. What I learned from this was just try to reach out. I mean, sometimes it might not work, but if you don't reach out, you'll never know if it will work or not. With like experimental short film, you're exploring things, right? So try to do some new locations and try to do some like cool like concepts with this. All right, so after filming at the church, we went to try to find a barbershop because I know with death row inmates or at least in the past, they would have to get their head shaved so they can do the electric chair, right? We went to Great Clips first and we asked if we could do it and they were like, all right, I'm gonna make a phone call to my manager. And at that point, I was on Google Maps scrolling, trying to find the next place to go to. But to our surprise, they were super cool with it. And the barber was honestly super dope. She was down to act in it as well. So after filming at the barbershop, we realized we had a lot of time in our hands and we were kind of ahead of schedule. So then we went location scouting, trying to find the next location. So we went downtown and we found this like alleyway where I took some of my senior pictures. And this alleyway was actually really good and it looked really good for the film. 
So we kind of played around trying to figure out the angles and lighting and stuff. So the next thing we had to film was the Dairy Queen, like the last meal scene and the opening scene where the kid accidentally kills a homeless guy. And after that, I had to film a scene with, you know, the, the very end scene where the guy goes crazy on the couch. And essentially, I had to get a lot more crew. I had to get a mic person. I got to get another actor, a behind the scenes, and an assistant director. And I had to call up all my friends that helped me in the past with films, and I knew we were reliable. So we all met up at Dairy Queen, and we headed inside. I met up with my actor, realized he was wearing the wrong outfit, so I sent him back home to go change. Why you're here? Uh... I got told to be here. By who? Cheyenne. That's right, our amazing director who's outside right now, giving us in here to stand around. Great! And I had talked to the Dairy Queen employee. I was like, hey, do you remember me? I was here yesterday asking about the location. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they like low-key blocked off a whole section of the restaurant that we could use to film, which was super nice. Also, another tip I have is just to be super nice, even though if they reject you, just play it cool, you know? I mean, they don't owe you anything and everyone's just working together, right? So just be super nice and uh, try to convince them it's gonna be a cool project. So after a little bit, I set up the camera and my actor came back with a new outfit and more of the crew started showing up. Now here's our, our the main attraction, Johnny himself, the director, man. And there's Evan also coming in, looking like a Jason Momoa ripoff. I'm Evan, 17. I'm here to shoot a movie for Guyon. Yeah, and you dropped stats. Why'd you drop stats, Evan? Because I have 39%. Just getting some creative shots, what do you think? I have a video. I can, I can capture sound, you can't. So we started filming. Oh, we're on this one. Hey there, will this be for here to go? Uh, for you, please. Okay, good for you. Um, can I get a one, two, three, can I get that, eight, nine, ten, um, all your blizzards, how do you feel after your first shot, Evan? How do you feel? Good, because I've been doing this all day. Basically for the last meal scene, we had a whole table full of food and you know, if we got all that stuff, it was gonna cost probably like almost $100. So we had to cover the whole table in food. What I did was like, hey, everybody get whatever you want to the whole crew and everyone ordered what they wanted. So we had a table full of food and then the manager gave us a bunch of empty boxes and bags to like fill in the sides to make it look even more like epic kind of. And, you know, it all worked out perfectly. The shot looked really good, I think, and we got the shot we needed. This man's a gluttonous pig. I'm gonna get something after this. Yeah, because we have two. Now you have one. One of them's no drink. It's empty beverage. <laughs> that was good, that was good. That was, no, good. that was good. Okay guys, eat it in like two minutes. Go. What? 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 So after this, we went to downtown to film the opening scene and we got there. It was so cold, but I think I was all right. I had a coat on. We started filming. We got the wide shot of him walking downtown, which looked really nice. And you know, again, with the snow, there's not a lot of people downtown. It was very chill and filming was super easy. So how do you feel about getting shot by Evan today? Yeah. I'm getting shot? Yeah. Oh, You're so getting murdered by him. Ready? I'm gonna hide behind this dumpster. Am I going to jail? Yeah, this is an heirloom. 18 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm f filming found footage. <laughs> and we filmed the alleyway scene. We low key like. 
practice the stunts as they were doing it. And honestly, directing actors when they're like freezing, <laughs> it is a little bit harder. It's a bag right there. It's a homeless bag. What are you talking about? I don't, I don't care. We're not filming that yet. There we are. Come on. Evan, stop being a bitch. Dude, shut up. I think we all pushed through the, the challenge of filming in the cold. And honestly, the behind the scenes photos looked really nice. Anyways, after filming the alley scene and the scenes downtown, we went to my friend's house and we filmed the final scene of the movie. And honestly, like, I wish I could have filmed a little differently, but with the minimal crew, it was a lot harder to film. However, you just gotta work with your constraints, right? And just make the most out of it. So after filming all these scenes, we went and got some food at a restaurant. Guess which restaurant it was? It was Dairy Queen. I'm going there more often because I gotta support, you know, the homies, right? So we had dinner there and we talked, had a really great time. After we finished production on this movie, I went back home and the next day, the post-production process began. I think post-production is a very crucial part of making an experimental short film because it allows you to try out differently editing techniques, cutting things differently than you normally would. And I think that's for sure what I did here. Like the ending scene was honestly kind of crazy with the, the crazy flashing. And I had so much like different editing than like what I would normally do. And it was honestly a great time to edit after cutting everything, like first rough cut, I color graded everything and it all looked really nice, I think. So after I finished editing, I sent it to some of my friends for feedback. And I think this is super important when you're editing something, try to send it to people before you know finalize the edit, get some feedback and then get some reactions, see what parts are slow, what parts didn't work, which parts looked weird. I sent it to my mentor, he gave me a bunch of notes and I kind of ran into an issue because the end scene after editing it looked cool, but it just did not work. And I was like, okay, I need to add it like a very cool, like a quick shot in the very end with like an electric chair. But then I realized I don't have an electric chair. So I had to find a chair and no one had it chair that looked like an electric chair and I didn't want to like build a chair. So I was like, you know what? I will just wait until I have time and I'll find a chair eventually. So fast forward about six months later, I still didn't find a chair and I was on my way to California and I was like, well, crap. Um, I don't think I'm going to get the end shot. Uh, so two months into college. So this is probably like eight or nine months after filming this movie. I basically was like, wait a minute. I, I filmed this project a while ago. I've been editing it. I probably should finish it. So I invited some of my film production friends at USC and they came in and kind of gave me advice and we kind of edited it together and we finally finished it. After nine plus months of work, we finally finished this short film and I was so proud of it. I think it turned out really good. It was kind of like a stepping stone because the film I made before that was like the college application film, which was you know, kind of a bigger scale. And this experimental short film was like kind of like the beginning of like a new era of my filmmaking career, I think, because this was like the era of like doing it all by myself, run and gun style. And, you know, I think it was a great opportunity to practice filmmaking. And I think experimental short filmmaking is probably one of the best ways to get started with filmmaking. It's very simple, not a lot of like very harsh things you have to keep in mind of. And it's just kind of just fun. You know, you're exploring, right? And I think that's what filmmaking is all about. Yeah, so if you want to check it out, uh, the film is right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video of how to make an experimental short film and final drift behind the scenes combined into one. Best of luck in your future filmmaking endeavors. Peace out.